Alrighty folks, in order to finish the kitchen, we have to take everything off up above and we're going to wash it. No, we're not doing it clean with me, but <laughs> you might get excited to see the stuff getting clean right here on my take on Home and Garden. Come clean with me. <laughs> this is how you get things done quickly. Two people that know what they're doing. When it comes to the antiques and collectibles, we really don't even ask the kids to help. We just, you know, I'd rather do it myself. I don't want to get mad at anybody. And people care about things differently, right? Or don't care. So if you thought we were doing a clean with me video and got disappointed, we're just not. We're cleaning them so I can do a picture collection video. Folks, you saw us clean above the cabinets where we keep our collection of pictures and other antiques and I wanted to take this time to show you our vintage and antique picture collection. Now let's look at some of the more famous American names first. Okay so I got a couple of categories for you and this one, most of you would recognize the name right off the bat, is Roseville. Roseville, Ohio. And this company made early products. You can find all kinds of this Roseville still around the country. And it does tend to bring a good price with it, too. So this is our little example of Roseville in your basic cream and brown typical so typical of early pottery in the US. Look at this one first this Godinger in uh, 1970s out of New York. They did a lot of this homeware real cute look at the lace top you've seen this in a video maybe and this company is from like I say, New York and started their work in the 70s. So this is an example of Gottinger. Francoma, this is a really cute story. And I think his name was John Frank, but the Francoma comes from Frank in Oklahoma, okay? So a cool thing to know about these if you're trying to date them, the early Francoma, earlier than 1954, they were using uh, beige clay, okay? After 54, they used more of a local clay, which was redder. And if you look on the bottom here, this is redder clay. So this jug is simply after 1954. If somebody's trying to clip you for an early, early Francoma, <laughs> you'll know. You can tell them where to go. Okay, now we have another cute one. You guys will recognize this name, Hall. Hall has been around the U.S. and it's another Ohio company from the early 1900s. 
classic with that fading running lip. See that? And this is signed and the proper name of the company on the bottom. So this this jug, let me see if it just simply says Oven Proof USA. No particular date or way to date it that I know. And this is in that beige clay, a lighter clay. Then we got another big name in American pottery, which is Bauer, B-A-U-E-R. And they started in Kentucky in like 1885, but they ended up, the founder wanted to uh, have some better weather, so they moved to LA. But Bauer will bring a good dollar with it. Now those are the bigger named pitchers that we had. And now I want to show you a couple more groups. Two are Italian and these are in the heavier Italian clay. You can see the color. Beautiful piece for this little pitcher. This weighs a ton and I just love it. Otherwise have a manufacturing name on just made in Italy. Here's another one. Classic shape, all white, made in Italy. This is made for Banana Republic at the time. Here's one, Russell Wright, okay? And this is a signature piece by Oneida Ware. I'm pretty sure that's New York State, too. Real cute. An artsy design. You can clearly see that. So they were stepping out a bit. I'd put that around the 70s. Okay, now we have China marching through the country. Little farmhouse pictures like this, or even restaurant pictures made in China. I still just love this classic tapered angle shape for your breakfast. Okay, now this was, we got quite a bit of this. This was a set that Target carried that they made in China for, for Target. And you can get everything. They have vinegar cruet. They have cup and saucer combos. They have all the canisters for this. Some of you have probably seen it. I loved it. Angela's sick of it. <laughs> so that's vintage now because that come out at least like 20, 21 years ago. I know that one for a fact. Here's another piece. This, I believe, is going to start off... Now, this is made in China for homeware. Homeware. I love the shape. It's more modern. And I love the color, especially around the holiday. So you'll see, I'll put this away and bring it out at Christmas time. Just like that little green one. Alrighty. Here's our next category, guys. Now, again, these are still pictures. They're not creamers. That's another video. <laughs> Believe it or not. These, in this category, are typically what's called your stoneware. They're extra thick and extra heavy. In different clays. This is a lot like that uh, Frank Homa. I'm surprised, but this is really nicely done in the old-fashioned red. I just love that color. Now, I don't think most of these have a name, but this one does have a name. This is uh, Roosevelt and made in the USA. It's probably really extra nice in your early picture design with a simple blue 
stripe. You've seen them before. Especially you collectors. Really good. Here's one. No name or marking. Otherwise, it's still in that crockery style, stoneware style. I love the two or three tones, how it comes down around the pot. This is a little newer, but it's it's really good. Okay, this is fantastic, the shape of this. Just a beautiful stoneware vase and pitcher. You know, I'll you <laughs> I do so many flower arrangements, I'll call them a vase because sometimes I'll use them for a vase. You know that. But there is your extra unusual scalloped handle. And this beaut, I know you've seen this in a probably a video. No marking, like I say, most of them in this stoneware category. Big farmhouse milk or water pitcher typical. Beautiful color here. I love the neutrals. You know you can do do a lot with neutrals. So that's just a dandy. We got one more in that stoneware category. Make sure there's no no name on the bottom. This is in a crackle finish just through the middle and almost a sliding red glaze. Really unique. It's pretty special in its own right. And you see it's got that bell shape. Just a the standard bell shape and handle. Really good. This one I won't spend a lot of time on because I did show it in the other video, but this is the uh, Made in England Fine Porcelain, and this is the only one I have really in that category. The closest other one is the Lace Top. Just spectacular. Extra heavy. Evansham. Made in England. Just beautiful, guys. So folks, hopefully you liked our You're Not Cleaning With Me video. <laughs> and going through our beautiful farmhouse and otherwise, you know, vintage and antique pictures collection. Thanks for stopping, guys. Take care now. And you know, you can see us on Instagram. Or give us a like, a share, a comment, and a wagon full of subscribers. We'll keep them happy. Thanks, everybody. Take care, and we'll see you in the next Over the Top wonderful, informative collection video. That's a beaut. That's a cute. <laughs> this is greasy. Oh, that won't clip. I'm sure it's not the only thing that that's greasy. <laughs> that's got Christmas in it. Sprinkles. <laughs> Here's your husband beater. Yeah. Oh, the cutie one. Careful. You know it doesn't work. Well, you put the crown molding on the top and it covers up your stuff. Oh, there's a piece I missed. <laughs>